Hello YouTube, it's Shin Tiger Curl here, that dude in the straw hat, bringing you yet another wrestling review. I'm of course joined by my fellow, by my roommate and fellow internet superstar Joe. Say hi, Joe. He just had hamburger helper. Well, it's Monday night. Sorry for have not if I haven't had the time to um, do any reviews lately. I've had a busy time at work getting ready for hockey. Long story short, things exploded. Leave a comment below. But yeah, it's Monday night. You know what that means? Time for some Raw. It's still, we have a more than a month away from Hell in a Cell. So how is the WWE going to build up to this? I got my notes. Let's get started. Uh, John Cena comes out and says that his in that his arm injury that if you have been following wrestling you would know that John Cena injured his elbow and had to undergo severe I mean serious elbow surgery. So far the the buzz around the internet is whether or not John Cena will be ready for Hell in a Cell. I mean, we know that Cena is a freakish a freak of nature by all rights and regards. I mean, the guy did come out come back from a major neck surgery just a week afterwards and just didn't seem nothing bothered by it. But he comes out, of course, says the usual um, cheap pop stuff, like, we're in Sacramento, we got this, we got that going on. Don't need to try so hard, Stan. But yeah, this immediately segues into our first matchup. Big Hungry Ryback versus the former tag team champions Primo and Epico. There's really not much to say about this match, other than the fact that it's a standard squash match to build up Ryback. And... I'll touch, just touch on this for a small second. Um, my thoughts on Ryback are, I like the guy. He's more, he's surprisingly over for not having much to say or do in the ring. I mean, he, like JBL has been saying, and yes, JBL has been doing commentary, so it's good for us. But JBL said, often says a lot of true stuff, and it's true what he said, that Ryback needs to be tested. Squash matches are good for building up, but if you're really going to have this guy go for a run at the big belt, you need him. You need a credible threat. You need someone to really take Ryback to his limits. Someone like probably the Big Show or Tensai. Someone big, like a top-level mid-carder. Someone just to show off how, what a monster he is. We already know he's a monster, but give him a more main event feel. I can, I can dig him chasing after the title, but not getting the title. Anyway, Primo Epico gets stomped, sneezed, and ashed. Next up. Next up, we have a match. Brodus Clay uh, versus R-Truth. Double, uh, R-Truth gets on the mic and says that little Jimmy is going through some changes. Puberty. So he doesn't want to fight tonight. But he does want to dance. So for the next two minutes, we are treated to R Truth and Brodus Clay dancing. Yeah, somebody call my mama. This is just terrible. Yeah. But thankfully, Vince gets on the mic, gets on the Titan Tron, and tells him to get the fuck out of the ring because he's about to make the state of the WWE address. Thank you, Vince. You saved us a lot. So Vince comes out doing the patented Vince McMahon power walk. And he talks about the, the state of how they have a lot of things in the WWE. They have a Funkasaurus. They have a guy who's has an imaginary kid as a, as a friend. They have luchadors. They have intellectuals. They pretty much have everything under the sun. So, but he is stopped in the middle of his segment. He's stopped in the middle of his speech by CM Punk. And I have to say, the, the incoming, pro the, the, the following promo was a pretty great one. Punk pretty much ripping into Vince. And in the fans doing his best to heal it up, but still getting some cheers from the crowd. CM Punk is only going to get cheered. But yeah, um, Vince talked about respect and mentions a lot of big name wrestlers, among, among which Stone Cold Steve Austin. Punk counters saying that the only reason Stone Cold got po popular was because he beat up a, a, a old millionaire who has even gotten even older. And then Punk proceeds to slap the shit out of Vince. Vince incensed decides that for the main event it's going to be CM Punk versus Vince McMahon. That's right, the best in the world versus the boss. 
This can either be very terrible or very awesome. Next up, we have the primetime players versus Steve Gata and versus and Rey Mysterio. This is the semifinals of the tag team tournament match to decide the number one contenders. This is the semifinals. This is a pretty solid um, tag match. The primetime players have really really taken advantage of this whole and I want to talk about that. Um, since the oh, since the creation of Team Hell No, Daniel Bryan came, we saw sort of a a revival of tag teams in the WWE. Back a few months ago, towards a few weeks, going back a couple of years, the tag team division has been basically dead with no real teams to speak of. But now, thanks to this, we've seen a sort of a revival. And this whole tag tournament thing has been a great one. This was a solid tag team match from two very good tag teams. But in the end, Sin Cara and Rey Mysterio pull off the victory. And they're heading to the finals. Next up, the WWE World Heavyweight Sha Champion, Sheamus, versus Way Back Mayo Gigolo. And just a nice, nice little, nice little throw match. I gotta say, I gotta, I'm, I'm pretty much saying what, I'm, what everybody's thinking. What the hell is up with Wade Barrett and this whole Wade Barrett is up with, Wade Barrett is open for business. He wants to sample the wares. Seriously, that sounds really, really gay. But overall, it was a nice, solid back and forth slobber knocker of a match with um. With the interfere with Big Show watching outside the ring, there was some interference by Tenside and Big Show, causing the match to get thrown out. So there's that. Next up, Tyson Kidd takes on Antonio Cesaro, stands Aksana. If you haven't been keeping up, Aksana and him broke up. Well, most of the us broke up with her. This was, a, this was a good matchup. Showed off the skills of both guys, but it was mainly for Antonio Cesaro who pulled off. An amazing Swiss death. Yes, that's what that move is called, for those of you who don't know. Where he does, where he throws the dude up in the air and gives him a European uppercut, it's called Swiss death. Now, if they could only give him back the Ricola bomb. But yeah, he takes it, wins it solidly. Next up, Dolph Ziggler, Mr. Money in the Bank, and El Batron, Alberto Del Rio, team up to take on Team Hell No. I will say I love this team. It's just so they're just so entertaining, more so than Truth and Kofi ever were. It's just so bizarre that it works. I mean, you got this technical submission expert in Brian and this big red monster, both of whom who seem to have anger issues. They can't get along to save their lives, and yet they're tag team champions and a great tag team at that. I've been so interested in a tag team like this since Jarrah Show. And that's saying something. But yeah, it was a very, very solid matchup. Surprisingly, Ziggler and El Patron make a pretty good solid tag team. It was a nice back and forth matchup with a lot of psychology involved, with, with Brian and Kane bickering most of the time, which plays into their dynamic, and they pick up the victory. Good for them. Next up backstage, Jerry Law, Jerry, I mean Jim Ross talks to Vince McMahon about his upcoming match, and debate tells him it's not a good idea for him to do it. Vince tells him he doesn't, doesn't matter what he thinks, thank you, Rock, and that he wants JR to call his match in the same thing that he called Stone Cold matches. Next up, we have an impromptu cameo by Larry King and his wife to interview The Miz, who happens, whose birthday happens to be today. Happy birthday, Miz. And Miz proceeds to own him like a government mule. Kofi then comes out. And, look, I'll just say it right now. That whole fucking segment was pointless from the start to finish. Larry King served absolutely no pur purpose whatsoever in this ri in extenuating this rivalry at all. He just was there. He didn't even talk much. Miz and Kobe were just running over him pretty much. He just seemed out of his element. Sorry, Larry, you're a great interviewer, but you didn't need to be there tonight. More on that later. Next up, we have the second match of the, of the Tag Team Tournament semifinals. Uh, Zack Ryder and Santino Morella versus the team of Rhodes Scholars, Cody Rhodes, and Damian Sandow. This is a very solid matchup again. Damian Sandow and Cody Rhodes worked well together, and they picked up the win.
Sorry about that. The uh, after the match was over, Santino was jumped by the group. I don't know what they're called. Of of what was his name? Of, of the one man rock band. Uh, his name is Casey for the moment. Jinder Mahal, who I fucking hate. And um, ugh, damn, I'm I'm just drawing a blank tonight. Just. Uh, uh, Drew, uh, Drew McIntyre. Yeah, we got two never words and a could have been. I really don't care for this group. Don't ask me why. Uh, next up, Eve and Eve. It's for the Divas title, Eve versus Caitlyn with Layla at ringside. Match was okay by Diva standard. Layla should not be talking while JBL is talking. It will not end well for Eve. I mean, Layla. Anyway, Eve picks up the victory, blah, 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 who gives a flying fuck. There's also one extra backstage segment with Larry King and Team Hell No, but of course Team Hell No takes it because they're much more entertaining. I mean, I mean you just, just look at it. It's just hilarious, but come on. Finally, we reach the main event, CM Punk versus Vince McMahon, the WWE Champion, versus the chairman of the board. First, Punk comes out and jumps Mr. McMahon from behind before the match even gets started. It becomes sort of like a beatdown, but Vince fights back. Surprisingly enough, this was a much more entertaining matchup than I thought it would be. Vince, despite how, how up in years he's been, really gave it to CM Punk. Vince was bleeding out of his ear and, and across his eye, and he was really taking it to Punk. I mean, you should see him. He looked like he was... Like, he caught his second win back when he was feuding with Austin. I mean, I'm, Vince, I'm amazed. I mean, even at one point, he had Punk even running for his life. I don't know whether it's to attribute it to Vince McMahon's overall great shape that he's always been in, or CM Punk's ability to just make anyone seem good, but this was a good, this wasn't a matchup at all. If this was a wrestling match, I would be ranting up and down about how terrible it was, but this was just a fight. It had no start, no middle, and begin. Just the two men just beating the piss out of each other. Boy, did they. Uh, CM Punk lands a low blow to Vince McMahon and tries to go and beats him with with the kendo sticks. They got introduced in this match. He uh, he goes to um do the put the go to sleep on him, but then Ryback came in. Did someone forget to feed the Ryback? Did you forget to feed the Ryback cat? He didn't. Ryback comes in hung, very hungry as usual. So he decides, but that Punk was no part of it. Then Cena decides to interrupt, throw him back in the ring, and it looks like Ryback is going to devour Punk. Punk slides out of the ring, takes his belt and heads for the hills. But Vince gets on the mic and says, next week, Punk, you have a choice. Either face Ryback in the cage or face Cena in the cage. And if you don't make a decision, Oh, damn sure, make it for you. Oh. And Punk, of course, is in the last image we see is Punk clutching his title in vain. So, that was Monday Night Raw. My thoughts? A little sluggish at the end, but it sluggish in the beginning, picked up in the middle, and was awesome at the end. That's what I have to say. So, of course, you now know what's coming. You probably missed it. Time for the D-Cell Battery Award. Now, I had a very hard time picking. There were two segments that I just didn't care for. One being that whole dance off, dance off with um R Truth and Brodus Clay, but the other one, it was no contest. The D-Cell Battery Award goes to you, Larry King. Not to take away anything from your journalism, but you added absolutely nothing. To this nice segment, you were, you didn't belong here tonight. I'm sorry, but Larry, I know you're retired and all, but stick to what you're doing. Don't don't whore yourself out. You're better than this, but you didn't really do jack. You didn't really do jack shit tonight. It just. But yeah, Larry King, you're eating a diesel battery, my friend. And now for my other award, the Jizz My Pants Award. 
goes to Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Yes, sir. My God, you were amazing tonight. You were intense, you were gruff, and you were surprisingly hardcore. I mean, to get into a kendo, you know, a, a kendo stick battle with CM Punk and winning, yeah. The size of grapefruits, my friend. The size of grapefruits. But yes, that was my review of Monday Night Raw. Tune in Thursday as I attempt to review TNA Impact. It's the final. I think it's the final show before the um, before Bound for Glory. How are they going to build things up? And how is Jeff Hardy going to fuck things up? So till then, this is Machine Tiger Curl, that dude in the straw hat, and Joe and Cat saying good night and wrestle on. <laughs>